Hello, welcome to today's video. So this is from yesterday. So I did this video yesterday. Put this look up last night and I wasn't sure whether people would want this as a tutorial. However, I had lots of people request it. So I thought that's brilliant because I've already done it as I was doing the makeup. I thought I'm gonna do it at the same time. My boyfriend was out watching Game of Thrones in the garage while I was on the treadmill trying to accomplish a ridiculous amount of steps because we both keep doing these challenges each week. So all you can hear in the video is Game of Thrones. Um, so I need to redo the video. Yay. So yeah, I've got a few new products to show you today. <laughs> this one being the first one, which I was gonna show you and tell you what I thought about it. However, I got out of the shower and did my skincare, which I always do before my makeup, so it's really important, I think, to moisturise and prep your skin for the makeup that you're about to put on after. Um, that primer, yeah, Maybelline, um, that primer was gonna go on and I forgot and just went straight in with my base, farting around with trying to figure out why my skin's like all different colours at the minute, and um, so I was trying to perfect this base, or a little bit of base before I do more makeup. And then I looked over and saw this sitting on the side and I thought, damn it, I really wanted to use that. However, I'll, I'll use that in another video and let you know what I think of that. Um, pour open pores is something I've never really had to think about, luckily, I suppose, um, until now. <laughs> so yeah, that's why I brought that, to just see if my foundation sits better on top of it um, because of those open pores. So yeah, I'll check that out in another video. As it stands at the minute, my foundation hasn't gone on too bad. I have been really looking after my skin and exfoliating, um, using SPF with the really lovely weather that we've got at the minute and had for quite a while now. Um, so yeah, I think that's important as well. Hydration is key because it all shows up in your skin. Um, I'll talk a little bit about brushes today, but keeping your brushes clean is really important. They just harbour bacteria if you leave them to sit for a long period of time. Um, so yeah, definitely clean your brushes. If you're using them regularly, then clean them a couple of times a week. If, you know, in my case, I'm doing quite full looks, so I'll clean them after every application. Application. Um, I'll use brush cleaner, I do like a spot clean for them, which is fine, you can use, I've got this flannel next to me, and then I'll use a brush cleaner, um, you can, again, loads of companies do brush cleaners now, so just have a little Google at that, and you can just spot clean them, so you don't have to think, oh god, I've got to thoroughly wash them every time. Um, so you can do that as well. These sponges as well, they are amazing. I love putting my foundation on with this. Um, however, you do really need to keep them clean. And I found a great um, bit of advice actually. I think it was a video I came across to keep these clean. I've tried so many ways to try and... Let me just turn my notification. Okay, so yeah, these sponges. So these sponges are really important to keep clean. I think they're amazing um, for the, the finish that you get for the foundation. Um, I use, I switch between makeup brushes and these sponges, but mostly these sponges now, because I really love the finish it gives my foundation, just sort of patting it on. If you want a more lighter finish, you can use it damp, which is really nice, um, especially in sunny days, if you just want a little bit of coverage. So yeah, my little tip is if you get a bar of soap, um, unfragranced, unscented one if possible really, and then wet the soap and then wet your sponge and then afterwards just rub your sponge along the bar of soap and you'll see it all lathering up and then rinse it underneath the tap and then you'll just see all the foundation and all the marks that you've got just disappear. So if you use this end, then just do the same along the bar of soap, get it lathered up under the water. And if then after you've rinsed it out and um, you still see some foundation and concealer on there, then just go over it again and go over and repeat that process until all of it's gone off the sponge. And it honestly, it dries and there's just no marks on it. 
So yeah, I've been trying so many things, so many cleaners, so many different ways, and there's always that little bit of foundation still on there, which has really bugged me. Um, so yeah, it's a great way of keeping them really nice and fresh. So yeah, my foundation on with that. Um, maybe as I go along, I'll perhaps talk a little bit about the brushes. Um, and you can always leave comments, etc. If you if there's something that I miss out and you really wanted to know about it, so feel free to do that as well. I am so bloody hot right now. These lights in here um, don't do me any favours when it's 24 degree heat, mind you. I shouldn't be doing a video at like half five in the evening. You know, I should do it first thing really when it's really nice and cool. Okay, so I'm gonna start off by using another NYX product. I'm really loving NYX at the minute. NYX and Revolution for drugstore brands. They're really, really great. Um, this is a white eyeshadow base. I'm not sure how I'm gonna get on with this. There are more fleshy tone colored eyeshadow bases, which I've used tons, there's tons out there. Um, I've used a lot of them, but um, just recently you've seen that I've done um, the Bright series makeup that I followed of Jamie Genevieve, who's an amazing makeup artist. Um, and I think if I've got a white base, the colors, if I'm gonna do some more bright looks, they'll look much better on top of a white base. So that's the reason I've bought that, but I'm still gonna try it in this tutorial. You can see how that's really white there. Now I feel like I've put a little bit too much on there, so I'm just gonna go in my ring finger, kind of spread that out a little bit more. Yeah, it goes a little bit of hatchy. Oh no, there we go, that's better. Maybe just because I put too much on. As always with makeup, the less you put on at the start, the better. Because it's always best to build things up. You get a better look that way as well. Okay, so that's some primer on. You can see that's actually really white, isn't it? So I'm gonna go straight on with the color now because um, you want it to remain a little bit tacky for then the eyeshadow to go on top, for it then to um, seal down. Um, it's gonna last longer then, basically. I just get myself a wet wipe because I've put way too much on the back of my hand, as usual. Right, so now I'm gonna go in with my Daniel Sandler brush. Again, it's a little bit like the concealer brush. I just, I really feel like I've got a lot of control with the eyeshadow. I'm gonna use this sultry palette I've used before. It's from Perfusion, you can get it off of Amazon. And I'm just gonna go in with this color here. It's like a beigey color tone. And that's gonna go on the top. Go right to the inner corners there. I've used this palette quite a lot now actually, I really like it. So I'm just going to pop that in the inner corner. It's not taking so well on this white primer actually, because it's quite a light colour. And I'm going to move on to a darker one, I think. It should go on better. Um, this NYX primer you can get in different colours. I just decided to choose white because I wanted to try for other looks. <laughs> Dean's desperately trying to keep the dogs quiet down there. It is a real challenge. Okay, so I'm going to go right to the corner with that. Then what I'm going to do is take my buffing brush, the Real Techniques one, the Real Techniques, look at Spectrum, they're a vegan brand if that's high up on your list for things that matter to you. Yeah, so I've just put that light colour and I have brought it kind of inside here in this area just to give it a little bit more contour. I've got quite hooded eyes so I feel like I need to I need to work with what I've got and as I get older they get more hooded so it changes for me quite a lot all the time and I just need to do as much as possible to sort of create more defini definition and contour on my eye. Okay, 
again, I'm just building up this colour. So I didn't have a clue what I was doing actually. For obviously, I have a clue what I'm doing. I didn't have a clue what look I was doing yesterday, um, or what I was going to do when I started that video. So that look just happened. I didn't know like that. I just thought oh, I'll just sit and do a look and a tutorial. And yeah, and that's what I created, which I, I very rarely do, so that's a bit unknown to me. I always go in knowing what I'm going to do. So you see I'm just placing the colour and then I'll just go back in with my blending brush. Blend any bits away. You can always rub a sponge, don't worry about too much if the colour's dropping down. You don't really want any colour to go anywhere below this line that extends up because it just kind of drags the eye area down. It was going to be quite a look, light look yesterday and it ended up being quite smoky actually. Bronzed glow look. So. Right, I'm just going to go and do the other eye. Okay, that's both eyes and the base colour done. So now I'm going to go in with this, like a, a burgundy colour. It's a nice matte colour to put on the contour line. So I'm just going to get a little bit of that. This is a Spectrum brush actually. They're really pretty. So it's, it's less compact more finer bristles in this that you can blend easily so you can place the product with these types of brushes but then also blend them out now i'll always have another one on standby so i've got another one on standby with no color on and then i'll use that one to just buff around the edges Go back to this one. So I'm just bringing a little bit on the outer corner, down onto the eyelid and then back up to the crease line and then working it over. I'm going to take a tiny bit And go a little bit into the inner corner. Next, I'm going to take an even more condensed brush. By that, I mean like all the bristles are packed in tightly to this one, and it's much finer. So it's going to grab onto that colour, I'm using the same colour out of the palette, grab onto that colour, just tap off the excess and then it's just going to place it in that area. So I want it in quite a small area on the eye, going right near the lashes. So that's why I've chosen a small brush like this. And then when I get to the outer corner, I'll just kind of lift it up a little bit. I'm not really making a wing. I'll get that clean brush and just buff that away. I, don't, I want it to blend nicely together. So I just go back in using my brushes to blend that out. I'm gonna take a little bit of more and I'm gonna almost pat it along the lash line so it's like you're creating a little bit of a um, eyeliner so if you use gel liquid liners uh, pencil liners you can actually create create that line by using a darker shadow so as i go nearer to the inner corner i'm using less pressure on my brush Because of course, the, the, the more pressure you put on that brush, the more that you're going to apply more colour to the area. So go lightly with them as well, you know, hold them quite lightly. 
and relax in your hand. I don't hold them too far up, so I feel like I've got that little bit more control with them. And I'm just gonna cut that along there. And I just kind of keep looking and seeing how far I wanna go with it. Don't worry about any fall down, you can clean that up afterwards too. I've got the concealer to add yet as well. Okay, so I'll go on and do that the same on the other eye. Okay, so I've done both eyes now. Next, I'm gonna go in with a nice metallic color to complement the colors I've already put on. I'm just using my finger. Here, baby's at the door. He's found me out. I'm just using my finger and I'm just gonna press that on top of the eyeshadow that I've got on already. And I'm just gonna pop it in the center of the eye. Just to give it a little bit of interest, just a little bit of shine to it. Just kind of brings all those colors together too. Some of these looks you might think, oh, it's just not gonna work and or it doesn't suit me. And what I'd say to you is that just stick with it because once you've done bronzer, especially with this kind of look, once you've done your bronzer and your highlight and you put lashes on if you're gonna wear lashes or your mascara, like when everything comes together, have faith that you're gonna really like it and you've done well. Don't just kind of look at it at this stage and think, oh, I wanna take it off, it's rubbish. Just keep going with it because I think you'll be surprised when the whole look comes together. Like sometimes it's not until the finished look that you sort of stand back and you think, actually, I really like that. So that's that part of the eyes done. All I'm gonna do is put a little brush. So take that same brush that I used on the top line Go back in with a little bit of the burgundy colour. It's called Nimble in the palette, if any of you have got this palette. And I'm going to put a touch on the outer corner, just under the lash line. Right on the lash line, shall I say. Just that tiny bit to bring it together. So you're using a darker colour, if you take some from the eyeshadow, eyeshadow oh my god. If you take some from the eyeshadow palette, some of the colour, just tap off your brush to get rid of any excess. So it prevents it just falling down your cheeks. I mean not all eyeshadows do that, it depends what kind of quality of eyeshadows. This palette is actually pretty good, I would say it hasn't got much fall down at all. Right, so I've done that. I am gonna go under the eyes with, it's just a crease brush, it's really soft. Just to blend that line a little bit better, I don't want it to look harsh at all under the eye. So yeah, this is really soft. You see how the bristles, they've probably got more space between them all. So it's really gonna buff color away, but place it gently onto the face too. Okay, next I'm gonna put some lashes on actually. I'm using the Eyelure by Emma Willis, these ones here. So I'm taking the lashes out of the box here. So I'm just breaking the back of those lashes because they've been stuck to the box for a little while since I've last used them. So I'm just going to make sure they're a little bit more pliable. They're a little bit more loose. Because we need it to fit that curve of our eye. I'm going to get them in my tweezers. And then pop a little bit of glue on them. So I'm just going to place them in the middle there. 
wait for that to sit and stick and then push down that inner corner. I did do a lash tutorial not so long ago so hopefully that's helped some of you that have been asking me. Especially at the minute because nobody can get any lash extensions done. I know quite a few people that do get them done on a regular basis so you must be finding it really hard. To be honest, I've realised how little lashes I've got so I actually wouldn't mind at all having um, lash extensions. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, I'm losing some. Maybe it's the shed. They do say that, don't they? The shed cycle of your lashes. Is that happening at the minute? I can't even remember. I used to do lash extensions a few years ago, so I should know the answer to that, but I don't. Right, so that's one lash on. Okay, just waiting for them to dry up a bit. I should say I've used these lashes before, so um, I know they're the perfect size for me because uh, I've cut them down. So yeah, otherwise I would have taken them out of the box and I would have measured them first. So yeah, just to let you know if you wondered why I wasn't measuring them or cutting them because usually they are too long. Okay, next I'm going to take my Charlotte Tilbury Rock and Coal. This is my flesh liner eye pencil. I'm going to pop that in the bottom waterline of the eyes. This is actually quite a bright one. You'll see when I put this on. I do prefer them when they're not as intense. I think they make a huge difference in my eyes. Right, so yeah, you can see how that, it does settle down a little bit, but you can see it's quite bright and quite intense. Um, you can get others uh, that are flesh coloured that are not as intense as this one. I mean, nine times out of 10, I use a black coal on the waterline anyway, which I just love for, for my eyes, for my eye shape with how big they are. I think I've got quite large eyes, so to bring the black on the bottom waterline, just, I feel like, tones them down a little bit, just smokes them out, um, which is the look I like. I do like this look, I just prefer it with the black on the waterline. I'm going in with some concealer now. This is Tarte Concealer Shape Tape. Uh, in light beige. Uh, you really don't need much of this at all. This is one that I've only just tried recently. But I'm just going to add it to any red areas that I've got. Uh, this is my Real Techniques concealer brush. So again, just like a bigger area to be able to go in and pat that concealer down and blend it in. These are guidelines for what brushes you need to use where. It's not set in stone, so if you find that you prefer using, like I prefer using the concealer brush as an eyeshadow brush, I find it picks up the shadow fine, I find it places it really well without any fall down. So for me, yeah, that's what I do. If you find, you know, you change it up and you use different brushes for different things, then and that's fine as well. These are just guidelines to be able to help you to apply the best uh, best makeup that you can. But the more you do it, the more you'll find your own way. It actually makes you quite light under the eye, which I'm not a massive fan of. I hope it will probably settle down. And once I get the bronzer on too, I'm not a huge fan of it just looking like really highlighted under the eye and then you've got your blush and then your bronzer. I, I prefer it all to blend in that little bit more. It's still like a really nice um, concealer brush. Concealer brush. It's still a really nice concealer. Um, I'm looking for a specific brush and I can't find it. Here it is. Setting brush, yeah. I love this brush. Again, I've used this for kind of contour areas before too. Um, I am just going to get a little bit of powder and I am going to powder that down just a little bit. I try not to use too much powder under my eyes because I am a woman of a certain age and fine lines 
are there. They have been for a while, but the more product I put in this area of my face, it just it doesn't like it. It goes into the lines, it looks drying. Um, at the end of the day, there's not a great deal you can do about that. Just try and pick the right products for you, for your skin type and for how your skin is. Make sure you um, use tons of moisturiser, eye creams, you use them before you're about to put your makeup on as well. So don't feel like you have to put them on and then wait for ages for that to settle in. Like, just go for it, put them on, make sure your skin's at its optimal, like, hydrated level. Um, so yeah, I only pat these areas down really to keep the concealer in its place. I very rarely touch this area with any extra product. You know, if you're young and sprightly you can get away with all these kind of things, but not me anymore. I'm going to go with some bronzer now. Big old powder brush. This is my uh, MAC. I think this is a limited edition one. I got it at Christmas. It's the sparkly face. This isn't a matte one, it's quite a shimmery powder. I'm just going to use it to start bronzing up. So I'm just going around the hairline where you naturally catch the sun just to give you that bronze look. Sweeping it up the cheek, again into the hairline, down the bridge of the nose, on the chin, and then I just go underneath a little bit on the jawline. I will try and get a little bit on the cheeks just to show a bit more of a sun kiss look rather than hugely sculpted. If you feel like you've put too much on in any areas and just go in with your sponge or your makeup brush that you applied your foundation with. Just press it down on the forehead where you think you've got a little bit too much bronzer on. I'm going to reach for this Revolution Pro. Well, really loving Revolution Pro at the minute. They're bringing out some really good skincare and um, makeup bits and bobs. And I'm going to use this matte colour here. A little bit and I am going to use a little bit of this matte bronzer just to sculpt so just in the hollows of the cheek and underneath the cheekbones and right up to where the hairline is and it makes the ear so I almost place it and then buff it out in circular motions I'm also going to put a little bit down the sides of the nose. Just a little bit of sculpt and contour. I don't mind a little bit, as long as it looks quite natural. Mm. I had a little bit of a the door. Hey, that's what I was saying, yeah. a little bit down the edges of the nose just to show some sculpt into the face and if you're a bit afraid of trying that then just build it up so try a little bit and build it up um, don't go in with the colour too much that you then are putting a stripe there or here and then it kind of puts you off. Um, it's best to just try these things in little stages. If you want to go over anything with a foundation brush just to make sure it's all blended nicely in. Move on to a highlighter now, it's just my cream highlighter. I just use my finger for this one. Especially my ring finger, because I just use it. I use this one 
um, very lightly. I hardly put any pressure on my skin at all. I really love this highlighter. This is a MAC cream highlighter in Hush. And it's beautiful. A little bit on the brow bone, underneath the eyebrows. I'm just gonna grab a mascara. It's just a Maybelline one, big colossal. And I'm just gonna run my natural lashes into those false lashes that I've put on. Also to run it along the bottom lashes. I haven't used much of my brows. I don't feel like I want to darken them up that much. The eyes are quite smoking, quite intense even though this was just gonna be a light look. Although if you didn't use the lashes, then that would bring it down a tone. You can just use the mascara, you don't have to put the lashes on. Um, I've got this new lip pencil from Topshop here. Topshop range is really nice. I've got quite a few of their lip products. Well, I guess I can see it. I was just about to say, can you all see that? No, neither can I, but yeah. That's all right. You have to work a little bit hard for that color, which I don't like doing. There are other lip liners out there from drugstore brands that pay off immediately. Like you can see the color, it does its job within seconds, which is what you want, isn't it? Um, ah! Dropping everything. So this is a Revlon matte colour, which I really love. I've got a couple of these. In the shade, oh my God, it's so tiny. I genuinely can't read that. Anyway, matte lip colour. You'll see what it's like. Be pretty like I don't know burgundy rose color. Who knows? If I had a name that I could read, then perhaps I could tell you all. And then so I just keep going and keep going and keep going with products. So no, I don't know when to stop. That's my problem. Oh, I was going to show you this fan brush as well. I really like this fan brush. It's really soft. This is really nice for um, powder highlighters. So in this palette here, okay, if you want to, I don't know, maybe sweep over them. You want to mix? And a really highlighted look. Then you just use this fan brush. It places the highlighter on so softly. It's really lovely. So I like that brush, gets a tick from me. Uh, what was I doing? Putting some gloss on. Okay, I'm getting totally sidetracked now. This is a lip oil by Gosh, but it's so pretty and iridescent. So I've just popped a little bit on the back of my hand and I'm going in, just applying it to the centre of the lips just helps to make them look a little bit fuller, as the lip liner. And, oh yeah, I've also got this NYX Dewy Finish Spray, so I'm gonna finish with that. I think that is everything. See once, probably shouldn't try and talk when I'm spraying that in my mouth. Um, hopefully you'll be able to use this look if you're going to visit friends or family or get together with people in gardens now that we can finally get in groups. Um, social distancing, of course, but maybe it's just a little excuse for you to put on a bit of makeup. Um, yeah, and go out and see friends and feel a little bit like that there's a light at the end of this tunnel finally. I think we can all do with a bit of light relief. Um, I'll list the products as per and yeah any questions leave a comment below subscribe to my youtube channel hope you enjoyed that and i'll see you on my next tutorial video see you soon bye